In this video, we are going to take a look at what has been described as the ultimate fishing explorer yacht. This is, of course, the 32 meter long range explorer yacht Uptight, built and launched by CDM in 2022. Make sure that you stay tuned because in this video, as well as checking out her interior, we will also be having a look inside her bridge and her immaculate engine room, which is home to her twin Caterpillar engines. Before we get started, this is just a quick request to ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's see how quickly we can get to 50k subs. As mentioned in my introduction, this Explorer Yacht has been described as the ultimate fishing Explorer Yacht, and it is easy to see why. Uptight has been designed to fulfill her owner's desire to have a reliable and comfortable explorer yacht to enjoy months long fishing expeditions in remote and uncontaminated seas. The owner of Uptight already owns a few planing hull fishing yachts and they wanted to add a displacement yacht to their fleet to enjoy long range expeditions. The fishing cockpit has been designed as a bespoke version of a sport fishing yacht. The stern platform has been transformed into an enclosed cockpit with a bulwark. A battle station has been centrally placed in the cockpit and fishing will be carried out in a stand-up position, allowing multiple strikes to be managed at the same time, giving more fun to the fishing family. Screwless rod holders have been placed on the large teak cap rail around the cockpit, all equipped with drainages and an easy access for periodic maintenance. Flush floor tanks with water recirculation and pump for live fish bait are located on the transom and below the cockpit floor. The adjoining lazarette is arranged cohesively with the fishing activities in mind and includes a small yet fully equipped workshop. Before we check out this vessel's interior, including the bridge and of course the engine room, let's just take a wander around the upper deck, starting with the cockpit. This large area is perfect for entertaining and of course for alfresco dining, with lots of seating for guests and a perfect vantage point over that amazing bespoke fishing cockpit. The overhang also provides an excellent escape from the sun's beating rays. And check out the width in the side decks. For now, let us head over to the starboard side, ascend these stairs up onto the owner's deck and walk further along the starboard side towards the bow. The indirect lighting on the port side of these stairs provide a very subtle tone to the vessel at night. One of the great things about the side decks is not only the handrail for added safety and security, and of course the life buoy that is neatly tucked away, but also it's worth pointing out just how wide these side decks are. As we head towards the forecastle and we pass the forward raking windows of the bridge, it's also worth pointing out just how many sun pads there are. An excellent place for the owner and his guests to just relax and soak up the sun. There is also some additional seating located just forward of the sun pads. Anchoring and berthing operations aboard this vessel are made straightforward for the crew thanks to the fantastic layout of all of the deck equipment. As we gaze up at the radar mast, we see that she's fitted with two navigation radars, satellite communications and a forward-looking infrared camera. Note also the number of handrails that there are dotted around the forward area of this vessel. 
And if you're wondering what's down here, well then I did manage to get some footage whilst resisting the temptation to actually go down the ladder. The wheelhouse on this explore yacht has a door to port and starboard as well as repeater controls on the wing. It's hard to imagine a better area to sit down and relax with family and friends as you enjoy the sun and the view, whilst also being able to take refuge from the sun's rays thanks to the bespoke awning that we find here. Of course, as you would expect with any long range explorer yacht, safety is paramount. And there are no fewer than four life rafts that are located on this area of the vessel. Two to port and two to starboard. On this part of the vessel is also where we find the crane for the tender. Of course, for the yachting festival, this area was configured with the sun loungers. This owner's upper deck stern terrace is huge and affords the owner some excellent privacy as well as views that are quite frankly priceless. And now let us take a look inside the owner's stateroom. To the port side we find a chair and desk, a great space for catching up on those all important emails. Two large windows, one to starboard and one to port, as well as the doors allow lots of natural light to flow into the area. The owner's stateroom has a very warm and inviting feel, and yet the vast amount of natural light in this area helps to create a sense of being connected to the vessel's surroundings, wherever she may happen to be. But what about the owner's ensuite? In here we find his and her sinks with a huge vanity mirror. The shower has one of the largest rain head fittings that I have ever seen. And as someone who likes to shower twice a day, 30 minutes a time, then I can say with my hand on my heart, I'll be happy to spend an equal amount of time in there. Above the owner's stateroom is where we find the large sun deck. As well as having lots of seating for our fresco dining, we also find a bar and grill. But that's not all. As we look towards the stern of the vessel, you'll notice a very large jacuzzi that is flanked on both sides by more sun pads. This sun deck is great for people like me who want to try and avoid spending too much time in the sun thanks to the hardtop that we find over part of the sun deck. And as we take another look at the radar masts, note the SSB antennas and CCTV camera. Before we head down into the accommodation areas, I'd like to show you the amazing bridge on this Explorer yacht. As you'd expect with a world-class Explorer yacht, up here you'll find everything you need to manage the vessel. In front of the helm position we find no fewer than four large multi-screen displays. And yet there is still enough room on this helm position to use traditional paper charts if you wanted to. All of the vessel's controls are within easy reach of the helm position and are laid out in such a way that you wouldn't have to move very far to get from the VHF radio to the engine controls. And when you are carrying out close proximity maneuvers, having everything within easy reach of the helm position is a godsend. After all, the last thing you want to be doing when you're involved with complicated maneuvers is spending time trying to track down the vital piece of equipment that you need. On the overhead of the helm position, we find more controls and repeater displays.
Behind the captain's chair, we have an L-shaped seating arrangement because after all, who would not want to see the view from the bridge as you motor towards your next destination? In this raised seating area, we even find a flat screen TV on the bulkhead. For me, the bridge has always been one of my favorite places to be aboard any vessel. And the bridge aboard this vessel does not disappoint. Those forward raking windows and reinforced glass are designed to take on some of nature's harshest conditions. And the chief mate aboard this vessel was telling me that they had encountered no fewer than two big storms in the weeks leading up to transiting over to the Khan Yachting Festival. But what do you think of the bridge? Let me know in the comments below. Between the bridge and the owner's stateroom is this opulent stairwell that takes us down into the accommodation areas. Uptight has five guest cabins, two double, a large VIP and two twins. In this twin cabin, we also find a conveniently located Pullman berth. The outstanding interior layout makes the most out of the vessel's 255 gross tons. And as you walk around the accommodation on the lower deck, you get a sense of how this vast amount of space has been utilized to maximum efficiency. Even the ensuite in this guest cabin is incredibly spacious. As we come out of this guest cabin, we head forward and ascend some stairs into the VIP suite. I absolutely love the layout of this VIP suite and the use of the indirect lighting to create a very comfortable and ambient feel. I love how the head and the shower are separated from each other in their own individual compartments. The seating area in the shower is also an excellent touch. Another thing that I absolutely love about this VIP suite is this area behind the bed. As we pan around, we get a sense of just how big the VIP suite is aboard this vessel. Behind the tinted glass is the large audio visual entertainment system. And over on the port side, we have an office area. Again, great for catching up on those all important emails. But now let us head back out into the main accommodation area and check out the second twin cabin. After the twin cabins, we find two further double suites. And now we have finished taking a look around the accommodation areas, let us ascend the stairs and have a look inside the vessel's saloon.
I love the fact that the owner of Uptight has kept hold of the remnants of the champagne bottle that was used to christen the vessel when she was launched. When not in use, the large flat screen TV neatly tucks away into its stowage. As you enter the saloon via the cockpit and through the double doors, you are greeted with a reception area. The perfect place to pick up your drink before taking a seat on the very large L-shaped seating area. As we head forward towards the galley, we find the dining area that has seating in this configuration for eight people. Note also the bar seating area, a fantastic place to sit and watch the chef as he or she creates some of the best food that you can eat whilst afloat. The large galley would not look out of place in a stately home. But despite its grand appearance, the galley aboard Uptight does not lose its functionality. And what a great place to prepare the fresh fish that is caught in the bespoke fishing cockpit. Forward of the large galley is where we find the crew accommodation and mess area. Including the captain, Uptight has a crew of six people. And special mention to the member of crew who vacated the crew mess so that I could get some footage and show you what it looks like. And now for the vast engine room. As mentioned before, Uptight is powered by twin Caterpillar C18 Assert 500 kilowatt engines. These powerhouses push this Explorios through any sea state at a top speed of 13 knots. At 9.5 knots, she has a cruising speed that is around 1.5 knots faster than most other full displacement Explorios. Whilst motoring at a cruising speed, she has a range of just under 5,000 nautical miles. This Explorer yacht carries 40,000 litres of fuel and 6,000 litres of water. Having spent five years travelling the world on several warships, it always amazes me just how immaculate these engine rooms are kept. They are quite literally spotless. In fact, as you look around here, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this boat has just been launched, when in fact she was launched several months ago and has already clocked up several thousand nautical miles. I am sure that any former Royal Navy stoker would be happy to call this engine room their home. The level of naval engineering and architecture that is required in order to fit everything into this machinery space is quite frankly outstanding. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to give the video a like because it means that more people on YouTube will get to see it. Also, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to check out my other videos. The video recommendation in the top left hand corner is one of my videos that YouTube thinks you'll love. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.